Hello everyone out there. I'm attorney Brian Tierney. This is Breaking Bread with Brian. Today I'm at Mama Luigi's Fine Italian Restaurant here on the southwest side of Chicago, uh, just outside the city. I'm um, very excited to be here today. I want to thank the owners for letting us break bread. The, uh, there's a lot of great menu options here. All of them are delicious. I'll be talking uh, more about the specifics later. Uh, and the prices are reasonable too. Great place to come for any type of occasion, private parties, private events, or just a quiet lunch or a business lunch. The man behind the camera is Rene Costa of Bloom Visual. If you wanna take your marketing to the next level, you need to talk to Rene Costa from Bloom Visual. I can't stress that enough. Thank you for all your hard work as always, Rene. I'm here today with Ancha Gerken. She is the owner and managing broker at ARE Partners Real Estate here in Chicago, Illinois, on the northwest side of Chicago. She is also very heavily involved with the Chicago Association of Realtors, and I'm sure that the association is better for having her as one of their members. Thank you. Um, and Ancha has so many interesting things in her life that I want to discuss today. I think we have enough to talk about that we could do a second one, and maybe we will uh, next year. So. Um, I guess uh, the one last thing is that Ancha has a very extensive musical background. We're gonna talk about that too. So without further ado, Ancha Gerken, thank you so much for being here and breaking bread with me today. How are you? I'm great, thanks for having me. Absolutely. I hope you like Italian food. I love Italian food. It's probably one of my favorite. And you know, you can try to cook pasta at home, but it's never the same. It's not. No. Nope. Are working. you Italian? I'm not. I'm almost 100% Irish. Okay. I have a little bit of Cherokee Indian, um, but mo almost 100% Irish. Yeah. Okay. And how about you? I am German, and I'm a little bit of Russian, but yeah, almost 100% German. And I did one of those ancestry DNAs. Okay. It was completely not surprising at all, because my see. parents came here from Germany right before I was born, so I'm pretty pretty much knew what was happening. Okay, so they came from Germany, yes. but m mostly Russian. Okay. No, mostly German. Oh, mostly German. They came from Germany, but there is some Russian. Oh, some Russian yeah. too. Mm -hmm. I thought you mentioned there was some Dutch as well. Dutch. My name is Dutch, oh. but legend goes that it's actually the name of one of my father's girlfriends, which is probably why my parents were divorced when I was three. So. I see. Yeah, sad days. <laughs> Brighter days ahead here. I hope so. I certainly hope so. <laughs> So we met at the YPN breakfast. Yes. Uh, you spoke earlier this year about working with investors, which you do a lot of, uh, is my understanding, investors and in institutional clients. Um, for you, um, you focus more with like commercial uh, real estate and also um, uh, investors. Do you, do you still work w with residential or? I do. You know, the thing that's great about having my own firm is that I do what I want. No one else is the boss of me. And the same is true though for the brokers at ARE Partners. So if someone wants to do something specific, uh, we'll, we'll do it. We'll figure it out and we do it. So I've done everything from condos to, I'm under contract with a gas sta unfinished gas station or land development opportunities. And then because I'm also in Northwest Indiana, you know, I, I have, hunting land or other other things that you know sort of fall out outside of the purview of just doing one thing and I kind of need that because um, I like to do a lot of different things so you said your parents came from Germany um, mm -hmm. how old were they when they came here they had just gotten married so they were in their early 20s okay and they were mm -hmm. the f they were the first generation as part of your family that came here to America? yes that's right so okay. does that make me first generation Sec second generation or I don't know how that works. Yeah. I think if I they think immigrate, the you are first generation. Yeah, because I'm the, the first, first one born into that's right. to America. Yeah, and that's, so first I'm first generation too then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, what, what line of work were they in? What did they do? So my mother uh, is an artist and um, my father was actually offered a job here as the editor of the German newspaper and also as the radio host for the German radio. And so that's why they came here uh, for that opportunity. And so he's pretty well known in the German community. Unfortunately, he passed when I was a teenager, but people still know who he is. And because I have the same last name, you know, um, not that it's that prevalent anymore, but Lincoln Square used to be a pretty um, heavy German neighborhood. Area, yeah. There's only a few of the original store owners and so forth left, but you know, they all knew who my father was and so forth because of that. 
what does ARE stand for? That's a good question. Everybody asks that. Because you don't put it on your website, I don't think. It's no, so, so um, you know, a lot of people try to guess what it stands for, and I encourage people to continue doing that, but essentially our, our tagline feeds it, which is you need a real estate partner. We are your partners, ARE oh. partners. I like that. Yeah, thanks. That's just because you're artistic. That's why you come up with things like that. Oh, thank you. I mean, I've been seeing more and more brokerages are coming out now. Um, some of the newer brokerages out there, um, Main Event Realty, uh, World Champion Boxer David Diaz. Um, uh, my friend Kenya just opened up uh, uh, Keeping It Real, Growing Wealth, uh, KRGW mm -hmm. uh, Realty. Um, and they all stand for something. So keeping it real, gro uh, growing wealth, which brings ho home with me a lot. Um, I like that and I'll be talking more about that in the future in some of these videos. The thing about, about the real estate business is um, you do a lot of stuff and you don't necessarily get this tangible reward right away. You know, you talk with people, you show houses, um, you're networking, um, and eventually something comes of that. That is true. And that's not to discourage anybody, that's just the part of the, the process. Um, sometimes deals take months to happen and then the closing gets delayed or you know, there's a million things that could occur. But at a horse farm, what I learned this year was I love doing that work and the reason I love doing it is uh, because that, that tangible accomplishment you get right away. You know what I mean? Like you see that progress and so it's very tactile and it's very immediate. And so that's why I really like going out there and doing that. Yeah, there's something, I think we all as people need that immediate reward and whatever type of, um, you know, thing we're doing. Because like for me, like, I, I guess I'm going to be the perfect husband to my girlfriend um, because I clean the house. Like on, on a weekend, laundry goes in before I run my errands. Then when I come back, the laundry's ready to go into the dryer and then I start doing all my other stuff. Well, that's in the dryer. I'm like sweeping up the floor or mopping it or vacuuming or whatever have you. But it gives me peace because I feel like a clean environment, a clean home, a clean office, it, has, it, it, it um, creates a clean mind. When I get in and everything's nice and organized and nice and clean, everything's clean up here too. But when there's things messing around, uh, you know, messed up, there's chaos around me, if you will. So I feel that reward too. So I'm sure everybody has things that are like cleaning is kind of a mindless task. Like you don't have to be super present while you're doing it, but there's that nice sense of reward when you look around and see, you know, your clean, your clean, humble abode, if you will. Right. Well, that's part of the thing, and that's actually what I talk to people uh, at my office or um, generally people who ask me for advice in regard to this is, you know, if you if you need to do prospecting, you need to make phone calls, and out of your periphery something is distracting you that you can get done that will pull you away from that you will always choose that thing rather than having to make call maybe leave a message maybe have that person tell you not today or so what's the best no. strategy then? uh to to commit to that time frame for those phone calls the time blocking you're saying just the time just blocking. Strict, do strict it and blocking. do not allow yourself to be distracted by by the other stuff because um because that tangible element is so important to us it will feel like that's more important in general. And you might not get a tangible result from those phone calls right away, right? So, but you have to do them. You really do. You have to do them. And so to set that time to have that focus is super important. And I'm not an expert at it by any means. I mean, I completely know where my, my weaknesses are. And my weakness is if I can do something that will be completed in a half an hour and I can see it I can see that completion. I will do that every time if it's sweeping or, you know, whatever whatever that is. And even though it's important, um, that other business part is super important and that feeds what will later be a tangible reward. True. It's called a Woman Made Gallery. And Woman Made Gallery? Mm-hmm. And um, I'll send you the address. How often do they do, like, events there and things like that? They do, they've been doing, diff like, eight to ten group shows a year. Group, group shows? What, what yeah, so there's a political theme or a social theme and there's a call for work. Is it satire or what is it? It's whatever the theme, you know. Drama, the, satire. All whatever the stuff. theme is of the show. Um, so an interesting story is that one of, one of their shows a few years back, maybe 14, 15 years ago, was called The Child Within. And so they do a call for work, they explain what the show is, and then people submit their work and they have a juror, and the juror reviews all the art and selects the pieces for the show. 
Is that, you say juror? A juror, yes. Is that something that exists only there, or is this a common That's thing? That's a common and thing we, for we our galleries. What should be in here? Yeah, like, so. Here's, here's the perspective of a juror. This is what they do. They tell you, yeah, piece doesn't really belong here, you know, do it only temporary type of thing, and then the rest stays. Right. That's a, that's a thing? That's a curate. Uh, that's more a of a cur curator. curator. Yeah, yeah, so. Okay, I didn't know what a curator did. I'm learning new things. Yeah, so Thank they curate welcome. the art for the show, but for the juror, the juror has a vision for the show, and they would potentially select different pieces than a different juror might select. And right. the juror is selected based on the theme of the show. So, for instance, one of the more high-profile people who've juried there, juried there is Christy Hefner, who used to run Playboy. And there was a specific show where they felt that her her vision for the show would be of value. Um, so the child within happened. Um, I like the story because my mother my mother is was the executive director. She's now retired. Um, she is not the juror, right? She's the executive director, so she might give oversight, but she does not select the art. And she submitted for the child within one of my daughter's pieces, and my daughter at the time was four. <laughs> So she had drawn something and she, she submitted that piece, not indicating that it was a four-year-old child who had done the piece. And the piece was selected for the show. And then she, of course, came forward. So this art is like in your blood, basically. Like your daughter has it, too. Well, I mean, I, I think that everybody has a creative expression. You know what I mean? Everybody has that. Some people will say, oh, I'm not artistic at all. I, I don't believe that's true. I believe that everybody comes... Everybody is multifaceted and everybody has that element to them. He played folk music and I, and I listen to your music. I would say, like, if you ask me in one word what your music's like, I would say folk music. Um, but yes, some of the songs sounded kind of like jazzy and, and more big band, like from earlier on in the century. And then a lot of what I was hearing was, was very folksy. And, and that's something you drew from, from your stepfather then, you think? I, you know, I think that you draw from just whatever you're doing in life. Like, you know what I mean? Um, whoever you listen to, whatever you're listening to will always influence you in some way. Um, so I'm sure I got some of that from him. I mean, Bulgarian folk songs are different than like the folk of Bob Dylan and, you know, it's a different thing altogether. When right. I talk, I talk folk music. I'm talking about like the cultural folk. Cultural music. folk, as yeah. opposed to popular cultural folk. Maybe. Yeah, like as opposed to you know. Even though Dylan's awesome, I mean, I'm oh, sure you fantastic. love him too. Dylan yeah. is incredible. Yeah. So, but I did listen to. I do like a lot of the singer songwriter stuff from the '60s and '70s. Um, that influenced me for sure. Um, my my last band that I was in before I retired, which was eight years ago, um, was. Don't say that we're retired. But I did. You might I, still have. I want to see you perform somewhere. Just because you're performing in no. commercial real estate and real estate in general doesn't mean you still can't perform musically. He's absolutely With right. With that jacket too, like you got a rock star <laughs> jacket on right now. He's absolutely right about that. Um, do you still play? When no one is around, yes. I do Guitar it for my, and singing? Or? Yeah, I do that for myself um, because I enjoy doing it. But you know, the thing about it is, I, that wasn't a hobby for me, that was my career. And so even though I loved it, um, I was passionate about it and all of that, it was something that I got to a point with um, commercially. Like, you know, I, I retired right before we got signed to our major record deal. Um, we were being managed uh, by Reba McIntyre's management company out of Nashville. And so we had gotten to a point that a lot of musicians strive for uh, for a long time. And um, I had lost my passion for it. And part of that was probably due to um, doing it for a while and being tired. Um, I'm, I don't really give up for being tired. Um, you know, I, I generally it's work grind, hard, man. but I lost the passion. And in order to do anything in life and to do it well and to enjoy your life, you gotta love it because you make so many sacrifices for it, whether it's in real estate and you're doing showings on the weekends uh, instead of spending time with your family or late at night or, you know, um, just anything, and it's not just real estate, it's whatever the profession is. I think if you don't have that passion for it, if you don't love it, then why Why are we doing it? So, so back to ARE Partners, how many how many brokers are in your brokers? I'm about eight. Okay, not too big, not too small, is it like a Goldilocks thing you feel like that's just right? Are you growing, expanding? We are growing, we are expanding. Um, you know, I've had a lot more and I've had a lot less. Um, and I think, you know, it's it's all about the relationship. Um, we're a small boutique brokerage, and so the culture of, you know, the the 
relationships is much more um, palpable. Um, I know all my brokers when I see them on the street. Right. They know who I am. You know, some brokers are so big. Um, and not everybody knows each other. So we're right. really more of a family. I like that family feeling. I like the, like the direct touch with all of the brokers. And um, so while we're in growth mode and I have a few exciting new brokers coming on, um, yeah, you know, I mean, uh, I like to do things and, and have it feel very personal. Uh, it is business, but it is still personal because you do it and you put all of your heart into it. Um, and so I like to have that connection with my peeps. So do you see uh, ARE partners growing beyond eight people then, or just kind of keep it around that level, or just see well, where it takes you? I think it'll, I think it'll grow beyond that. Um, you know, it's just making those right connections at the right time, and you know, someone who uh, may think that where they are now is the greatest place, and it is. And I'm, you know, every every culture of every broker brokerage is different, um, and different things work for different people, and so they sort of have to figure that out as they go. So what might not seem like a possibility for somebody today might change in six months. You never know what's going to happen. You could own a horse farm from one, you know, one year to the next. All of a sudden, something changes and you're doing something different. Um, you know, it's not about bouncing around necessarily, but what it means is that you're finding yourself and being open to opportunities. Sounds great. Thank you. We'll be right back with you, folks. We're going to order our meals and. Uh enjoy folks as you can see we are back with breaking bread and we are actually breaking the bread right now hope you enjoyed the good conversation that came before that um, I have chicken parmesan I have the minestrone soup um, but I'm gonna turn it over to Asha to talk about her salad her main meal and um, tell you how all that is uh, starting out here okay so um, I ordered the linguine and clams, which is one of my favorite dishes. I've had it in many different restaurants in the city. Um, there's a big Italian uh, contingency in Chicago, so there's a lot of great Italian restaurants. So uh, I've had some really good linguine and clams, and I've had some not so good linguine and clams. So the linguine and clams uh, will come after I talk just very briefly about the salad, which is a garden salad with Italian dressing, but the thing that makes it a little bit more uh, distinct is that the pepper, it's not just a red pepper, it's marinated. And this marinated red pepper, a little bite of that with the rest of the salad, fantastic. I'm glad you pointed it out too, because the staff didn't point that out to us. That's just something you noticed just by eating it. Yes. I did notice it just by eating it. <laughs> it was delicious. Um, what I have, like I said, is a minestrone soup. Um, and also, and you can see the hearty vegetables in there um, with a nice minestrone broth. Um, I also have here my chicken parmesan, penne pasta on the side. Um, there is enough here for two meals. This is not just for one. And when it comes to breaking bread, we are literally wow. breaking bread here. I'm gonna put some butter on this. Um, you can see how healthy and, and clean this bread is here that they're using. Let's taste some of this delicious penne with that cheese. Look at that cheese. Oh, oh. <laughs> you can't even break it off. There's so much of it. Make sure you chew it well. Well, folks, I don't have to sell it anymore. If you want good Italian food and great service, come to Mama Luigi's. If you want to take your marketing to the next level, you need to talk to the man behind the camera, Renee Costa from Blue Visual. That's right. I hope you loved all the conversation we had here. We loved uh, speaking with each other today. Thank you so much, Ansha Gerken, for being here and breaking bread with us today. We are blessed. We hope you stay blessed. Is there anything else you want to tell the viewers before we sign off? Well, if you need a great attorney, if your real estate transactions, Mr. Brian Tierney. Thank you very much. Stay tuned for the next episode of Breaking Bread with Brian and share, share, share this video. Never keep us a secret. I'm attorney Brian Tierney. This has been Breaking Bread with Brian. We love you.